Hey everyone, welcome to another round of my favorite game, Pitch Your Movie That Already Exists to a Noob. My contestant today is Osher, who is returning. He's a previous champion. Uh, Shmuel is, uh, a, is, is a former roommate of mine from Richmond, who also is starting his own podcast on films. Um, wow. But he Howdy. doesn't do, but he's not as well versed on classical movies, which makes him an ideal contestant. And we have my very own niece, Sivan, who is, now lives in Suffern, New York. And uh, Sivan, you were with me at the very beginning of my YouTube channel, weren't you? Yes, we did our like Frozen 2 reviews. That's oh, right. Yeah, no. that was one of the very first things we do. And has that aged well? Do you still stand by Frozen 2? I still keep my opinions, yeah. Okay, I knew you. I mean, Sivan was pretty obsessed with Frozen back in the day. Uh, Sivan, just keep your so all right. So the name, so the way this game works is that me and my uh, my fellow film expert Javier Valverde are going to pitch you movies that already exist. We're going to explain the movie and why you should see them. And at the end of each round, each of you three votes on the movie. I'm going to start. I'm going to start with the 1964 movie Charade. Uh, it's a film that's actually free to watch because of a copyright error. And it's a very elegant film set in um, Europe. It stars Audrey Hepburn and Cary Grant, who really are two very elegant, uh, very kind of like they have a lot of this elegant sex appeal. Uh, and um, it's, a, it's it's almost a very sexy movie because Audrey Hepburn is a very, she's considered this very sophisticated character actress, but she's also very forward. One of the most memorable lines of the film is when she says to, uh, Carrie Grant, she says, you know what's wrong with you? And he says, what? And she says, nothing. Which means, you know, she's really thirsty for him. Um, the film uh, oh. is a little bit of a bunch of different genres. It's a it's a mystery. It's a, Again, it's got this gorgeous, you know, vistas. Um, and it's about, it stars, it stars um, Audrey Hepburn and Cary Grant and it stars some of the best character actors of the era. It stars Ned Glass, who you might know from West Side Story, uh, George Kennedy, who won an Oscar, and Cool Hand Luke, and um, James Coburn, who did a lot of kung fu and western movies. He's also an Oscar winner too, as well as Walter Matthau, who you probably know from The Odd Couple and um, Grumpy Old Men. Um, and it has, uh, and they're chasing after Audrey Hepburn plays a widower, and they're chasing, and these three men, these very shady men, are also from the war, and they're chasing after their wife's war loot. Um, and there's also this kind of wild card character, again, played by Walter Matthau. It's just an absolutely beautiful movie, and it really has a lot of suspense. It's almost like an Alfred Hitchcock movie. Have any of you guys ever heard of Charade? Yes, I've seen it in the 90s. It's a very famous film. Uh, one of the last films that Cary Grant made before his retirement, actually. So I, yeah, I, I've I am aware that, well, Javier, you're supposed to have seen the film, because, again, you're the film expert. Yes, I've We're seen trying to stump the three who haven't seen, who might not have seen the oh, film. Sorry. Okay. But that is it. a very interesting point. Go on, Asher, what do you think? I said I haven't seen it. Okay. Have you heard of Cary Grant or Audrey Hepburn? I've, I've heard of Audrey Hepburn. Okay. Um. Yeah, and Cary Grant, actually, you're right. He was aging. He was a little bit concerned about being in a film with a younger coast, a younger woman uh, coming after him. Javier, I've heard of Audrey, but I haven't heard of the other guy or the film. Carrie, have you heard of Walter Matha or uh, no? Or... They were all the best act. They were all definitely among the best actors of their day. Um, but uh, uh Javier, what's your first film? Oh, it's uh, from Here to Eternity, uh, made by uh, Columbia Pictures in 1953. It's with uh, Burr Lancaster, Deborah Carr, and. Uh, Frank Sinatra, and this of instead of the World War II setting in Hawaii before Pearl Harbor, about all the lives of these soldiers and their women and all that is a very beautiful war story slash love story between the different characters. It uh, won uh, several. It won eight Oscars. It won Best Picture of the nineteen fifty three and Best Director for Cinnamon and. Uh, Frank Sinatra won his only Oscar for that too, Best Supporting Actor, as well. So, um, uh, 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 so yes, um, very beautiful movie. I recommend it for people that are like like anything with World War Two or 
love stories. Uh, and Montgomery Clift was in it. He got a, a an at best actor nomination, but unfortunately he lost. But it is also re a remarkable performance by Montgomery Clift. He had it, anchored the whole film, actually. Is it so. true that if I'm not mistaken that Javier that uh, Frank Sinatra didn't have much of a career before From Here to Eternity, like he was almost blacklisted by Hollywood? Yeah, because he married Ava Gardner because he was a uh, he sort of abandoned his wife. So because of marrying Ava Gardner, he was seen as a home. Well, she was seen as a home wrecker, but she she was very popular, so she wasn't affected by it too much. But he was because he was the he was like leaving a family. He was seen as a breadwinner because a man is seen as that, and leaving the wife with the kids, and so he was a lot. The public sort of went after him, and the studios. MGM, where he had a contract, dropped him like a hot potato. And that lasted for about maybe two years until this role was from here to eternity. And yeah, he I've seen clips of him winning the Oscar speech. He seems very, uh, very happy about that. I also, when I was visiting my niece, Sivan, and her family, oftentimes I stop over in Hoboken, which is Frank Sinatra's birthplace. I do it by accident because sometimes you miss the stop, which oh, right. goes to Penn Station. And yeah. I once went out, went to Hoboken and was like, "Where's Frank Sinatra's home?" And you walk about six, seven blocks from the train station, you can see it. And there's a big star uh, in front of his home that says, "From here to eternity." And there's oh. nothing else that marks Frank Sinatra's home. Also, speaking of Ava Gardner, I actually have an Ava Gardner biography here. Oh my God! Oh, what we was? It is five hundred and five hundred and seven pages, and just tells you like. It is extremely dense. Like I started reading it, and like the first thirty pages was like about her grandfathers and fathers and everything and her parents. Um, but how, yeah, how far along have you gotten in it? Oh, it's not that interesting of a book. I mean, if you want the the short story on who Ava Gardner is, she was a pretty cool actress who, uh, you know, who had a bunch of lovers and stuff. I would totally give it to you, Sivan or Javier or whatever. <laughs> I would like that book. I, I I lost my copy of it when I when I moved out of my house four years ago. So I don't if if you don't if you finish. Reading I would it, totally. I will mail it to you, Javier. Don't worry for participating. If if you beat me today, I will mail you this book. Okay. I okay. must have lost my copy too. <laughs> I was overwhelmed by how big this book was. I actually found it for free downstairs in the in the thing. But um, I actually second you, Javier, that that is one of my favorite war films. And one of my, I thought um, it's well known for the scene where Burt Lancaster and Montgomery Clift are like making out on the beach. And no, no Deborah, Deborah Carr. And Deborah. Sorry, Deborah Kerr are making out on the beach. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. but it, it's generally a very slice of life film is what I like to call. And that's what I love about old films sometimes is you kind of really get a sense for how people used to live and, you know, or how romance used to be or how, kind of standing up for your friend which Frank Sinatra does I mean that's basically his role he's like the wingman he's like the best friend of the main character and mm -hmm. Montgomery Clift is a very stubborn person but enough yeah. about me or or you <laughs> let's go to Osher, Sivan and Shmuel to uh figure out which film do you like the best let's start with Sivan so any film that I like no or... that's not the game the game is you have to decide the game is here to eternity or charade from here to eternity. Or that's... charade. All right, Shmuel, you want to go first? That's hard. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm trying to figure out the plots to both of them. So from here to eternity Dang. is somehow, it, it's a war movie of sorts. What's yeah, the plot? It's, uh, it's a war movie. Mm -hmm. There's a there's a trumpeter who's, there's a, a bugler who doesn't want to play the bugle. So he's very, um he's very stubborn. And Frank Sinatra is try, like is his friend. And he tries to like open him up to like not being uh, shut off to the world a little bit. And then there's uh, a uh, uh, um, uh, an officer played by who makes out on the beach with this woman. But it's more than them making out on the beach. They're also just kind of like, <laughs> exploring an illicit affair. The beach yeah. scene of them making out is one of the most famous images of the movie. But yeah. it's it's kind of like a lot of things. It's it's really just kind of a slice of life. Like what's going on? What's life like right before the Pearl Harbor hits? Okay, mm -hmm. so it's, it's, about, it's about around the war, a guy who sort of wants to play trumpet and needs some encouragement, and some people making out on the beach. No, he he want he doesn't want to play trumpet. He's the best <laughs> trumpeter they have, but he doesn't want to do it. Okay, 
He yeah, needs encouragement. He up being the military, sort of, I think. Or got it. Got it. Yeah. Just so right guess, before guess... Pearl Harbor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got it. Got it. That's like it's building up to Pearl Harbor, and then charade. <laughs> I think I'm a little foggy on the the plot of charade. The plot this is woman like... left a dowry. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, or this was this woman's husband left a war, uh, like a war treasure. And her three and his three old comrades are trying to find it. And Cary Grant is this guy who might be helping her, but he might also be shady. And mm. there's this other guy played by Walter Matha who might be trying to help them, um, but he might also be shady too. So Got it's it. like this very shady post uh, story in Europe. It's almost like a post war story, except it's very glamorous. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's very yeah. elegant. It's, you know. Is it, like is it more of a good question? Is it more of a treasure hunt or more of like a social intrigue? Uh, more like a like a, a suspense treasure hunt. It's like a suspense movie. It was made. It was made like like an Alfred Hitchcock movie. Because yeah, it's the, a thriller. It was a thriller, thriller, but it's there's an, a sense of exoticness to it because I think the characters are very sexy in a 1960s way, and they're also very. Um, very uh i don't know but but like it, there's a lot of scenery porn you know like where you're, you're filming in like these beautiful yeah. vistas in europe and you know yeah, like okay. paris and switzerland mostly Got in it. paris but they also yeah. film in switzerland yeah. so europe versus hawaii i guess pre-war versus post-war well you're an excellent contestant at this thank you yeah. see Vaughn, why aren't you as good at shmuel at this it, i, I don't know i just not I mean, I like, we're not actually contestants. I thought you guys are essentially the contestants and we're the no, judges. You, you have to, guys have to. No, you're right. I'm sorry. You are the panelists. I have to I have to figure out my own game. We're show judging you. I'm so you. confused. Oh, okay. So based on your information, in a way, we almost have to like give a summary. No, you don't have to give a summary. You just choose no, just which movie like is the, the better summary. one. Charade or From Here to Eternity. Which one do you like the best? Yes. I, I have to go with Orange, unfortunately. Oh, because Usher doesn't like me, but okay. No, no. What? Oh my god. I, I I'm going with yours because I I mean I'm fortunate for Javier because he's trying to win this book now, but oh um, but like you know, I like your movie better because treasure hunting seems like a better pitch, you know. Plot I don't pitch. know. The other one seems more exotic. The From here to eternity or charade. From here to eternity. It is a little bit more exotic. It's set in Hawaii. Yeah, and it's like, yeah. Name. It seems more intriguing and unique. The okay, it's not exotic. exotic. Shmuel, From what's your tiebreaker gonna be? Um, I'm I'm gonna go with charade. I like the treasure hunt and the intrigue. Okay. Okay. Okay, and charade is for free, so you can watch it anytime you want. I don't remember why it's free. It's like a copyright issue. There's a handful of movies that slip through the copyright system. All right, Javier is on mute. So are, are we making charade now? Is that how this works? You mean we? Oh, we're gonna play charades now. We, we 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 now we produce the movie. <laughs> the movie should be remade. I think I think Jonathan Demme did it in two thousand two with Tim Robbins and Mark Wahlberg. But, oh really? Yeah, yeah. which is funny because my second movie was also remade in two thousand four. But Javier, you need to unmute. Javier, you go first for your second movie. Oh, the second movie. Uh, uh, the King and I, the musical, Rogers and Harris. Uh, you guys are familiar with that one? I know this movie. Uh, yeah. I think I'm maybe a bit. Or Oriental? He said in Thailand, yes. Uh -huh. I've heard of it, I think. I've seen it when I was younger. I've seen little pieces yeah, little of it. Movie. I haven't seen it, but Javier, what made you choose this film? Because I like the mu Roger that musical is the best musical that Roger Everton made, other than the sound of music. It's like this is is a beautiful song like getting to know you, getting to feel bright and easy. So it's a beautiful the most beautiful song they ever wrote, actually. It's never came from. Uh -huh. yeah. That's where it came from. If Javier wins this round, he'll 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 um sing the whole song. So I was not a huge fan of The King and I. I just feel like it it had good music, it had like character development, but it just it didn't have like a wow factor. 
Oh, the wow factor is the costumes. That was like beautiful. And in cinema Yeah. Scope, cinema it's scope kind of like awesome. Phantom of the Opera where the plot isn't there, but the music and everything is. Mm -hmm. Who directed The King and I, Javier? Uh, Walter Lang, a director that, that was not well known at the time. He was sort of a little bit obscure. That's why people don't know about him. He sort of was, that was his big success in his career. He did many, he directed many films, a lot of obscure ones, but this was his main big one that he directed in his, in his career. That's why he's not like a, he's not like a John Ford or William Wyler. Of course. And what studio was it? We know that the most studios, most musicals uh, came from MGM at the time. No, but Fox, Fox also did good musicals. Uh, that came from Twentieth Century Fox. Uh, that one. So, uh, that was the, the studio for that. Actually, it was very glad it was made at Fox because at MGM they would have made it been too too sugary, too saccharine. It was more realistic, and uh, I and think that MGM under the hands of 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 uh, Gene Kelly with "It's Always Fair Weather" and mm -hmm. um, Brigadoon. There's certainly a, a little bit of darkness in some of their themes yes because they started because of the war the war changed the perspectives of the public so they wanted to be go along with how the public was feeling like so they it wasn't like like pre-war so they were adjusting to the mood of the 50s with the the beatniks and the rebelliousness that was going on after like in the 50s with people wanting to be different than 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 their parents Generally. Yeah, I, 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 I have a feeling that with uh with the musicals of the MGM era that uh Gene Kelly probably had his own ideas of kind of especially with It's Always Fair Weather, but I also think Brigadoon's a bit dark. Uh the idea of disappearing from society. And I think that probably the the studio heads probably I think it was Arthur Freed who headed this headed the musical department, probably wanted stuff that was very sunny and flowery and they probably had a little bit of trouble getting some of those dark things in. Yeah, Arthur Freed was the guy that didn't like dark themes in music, in his music. Yeah. He probably gave him freedom because he was Gene Kelly and yeah. had to, you know. And American in Paris is another musical that I highly recommend that, well, it definitely has quite a bit of lost love in there and alienation. So it has, it has uh, I remember I remember watching The King and I with my family. And at the time Matan was very young and it seemed like such a happy movie. And then with the ending, it just it kind of changed the complete feel of the film. Yes. Yes. It it, it has a, a, a sad feeling at the end of the film. And it really because it really came off as such a family film that we didn't expect that to happen. Right. Yes, of course. Yeah, that was probably shocking for our children to see. But the yeah, adult... Matan was crying about and, it. And Matan, for those who don't know, is my nephew. I'm actually surprised because I, your sister was on, my sister, your mother was on here the other day and she said that she doesn't really watch a lot of classical movies. So was it, by you say your family, do you mean your grandparents or do you mean my sister, she, your mother? She doesn't. It was, it was, Matan, she doesn't watch that many, but this is probably like one of the only ones we've ever seen. Yeah. Um, okay, so you know, I was gonna pitch uh I was gonna pitch um a different thing, but I'm gonna pitch a musical. Um I'm gonna pitch you 42nd Street, which is from the days of Warner Brothers and Busby Berkeley. It's I believe early 30s. Um yeah, early 30s, yeah. It is one of the uh sort of the last of the great backstage musicals. By a backstage musical, I don't mean the characters are singing and dancing outside of character, all of the singing is done by people in ways that are very natural generally they're rehearsing for a show or performing a show and it's not just a, and it's there's this one character played by ruby keeler and she's like plucked from obscurity to save a broadway show and it's very dramatic and then there's this guy played by warner baxter named uh his name is marsh and he is a really rich character on his own too and he's like he gives one of the best speeches I've ever heard in movie to where he's like, you're going to get out there and you're going to become a star and you're not going to do it because you're, you know, you have to, you're going to do it because we need you to. And there's thousands of people depending on you. And, uh, you know, there's like, it's a, it's a, he's, it's, 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 um, it's not all schmaltz and inspiration, but it's, but it's a film where it picks and chooses its moments quite well. Um, it's also direct. It's also choreographed by Busby Berkeley, who had very intriguing ways of uh, making people, uh, of like kind of like arranging 
dancers in geometric ways and such. Um, I think it's not a stretch to say that even like Steven Spielberg in Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom and that opening number, Anything Goes, he was very inspired by Busby Berkeley. Right. Um, but essentially, we have um, a musical that also that's, you know, it's got pretty good music, but I think what really strikes me is the two main characters um and <laughs> one is like an ingenue who's like oh my god i'm on broadway but the other guy is this this very wary character with this determination that he has to make this show work or else and it also reflects the times the of the depression where everyone's on the bread line and mm -hmm. all these people are lining up to get a job as a dancer and you know most of their dreams are going to be shattered and this dreams of the of the theater company is probably it could be shattered it might not be shattered unless they unless they work their heads off and even then you know they barely get to breathe a sigh of relief so it's i find it very poignant wow okay yes i know i've never seen it uh, that's one of the few i've never seen that musical i hope to see it one day is i've always heard about it since i was a child but i've never seen uh, i Did know the. Mm -hmm. And the leading man is played by the romantic interest of the leading lady is played by Richard Powell, I think. Well, Dick Powell, but yeah, his real name is Richard Powell, but they called in the movies Dick Powell, which I found odd. He wasn't, in my opinion, a leading man. Probably. Maybe back then the audiences found him interesting for that role, but I wouldn't have put him as a leading man. He didn't have the looks in that sense, but whatever. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Well, some people thought Ruby Keeler was also underqualified, but um, right compared to uh, the first guy who did sound in movies, um, Al Jolson. Al Jolson, Jolson, yeah, yeah. Um, there was a really funny number because I try to be a little bit humor, uh, full of humor in these skits, where where there's one of the numbers is I'm young and healthy. Let's be bold, because in in a year or two, maybe we'll be too old. Which is basically just saying like, hey, let's just give into biology. It's not. It's like the least romantic number i've ever heard oh. uh. um i don't know Shmuel, asher sivan what are your thoughts i don't know what either of the movies are about 42nd street like it sounds like it's about dancing and depression the king and i is about a king and i that's about as far as i've got i think that i'm gonna go with the second movie because it just it sounds cool with like the historical piece being displayed but also dancing is really cool and I don't remember a ton of dancing in The King and I for some reason. There was a lot of, there was some dancing, not a lot, but some, some dancing. I would say that The King and I does have historical context. It does, I'm doing Javier's job for it, but I mean, it certainly deals with the decline of um, the old, old world order and this king and uh, who's unable to accept mm -hmm. feminism. And it does. I just feel like I've seen The King and I and wasn't impressed, so I feel like I might as well go for a movie that seems like it has potential. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Well, I mean, it is. It, well, I mean, I know that um, 40 Seconds Street is actually available to watch for free online as well. Interesting. But I think I'll have to go with 40 Seconds Street as well. It's... I didn't know 40 Seconds Street is online. How did you know that? Did you just look it up while we were talking? Oh, it's like, you know, I mean... No, it's okay. How do we get all these free movies online? I don't even know. I mean, just, literally, if you just type in the movie name on, on into Google, it tells you where you can watch it for free. Wow. Um, on you the right know, side. Also, there's like, legal websites like evo1.net and 24 movies or something. Yeah, no, something. these are all legitimate websites like Tubi and Pluto. and. Uh, okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, those are legit. Yeah. yeah to watch a movie from, yeah. Okay, Shmuel, what are you saying? I'm going to go with The King and I. It just sounds more, I don't know, global. It is. You know? It is global, yeah. Being to yeah. New York, being there, seen that. Haven't been to China or wherever The King and I is. Thailand. Uh, Thailand. Thailand, my bad. All right, let's I, go for I've round three. Thailand. Um, I'm going to pick a film called The Manchurian Candidate. Oh, my. Wow, that's a high caliber film. What am I it is. It is one of those. It is one of my very favorite films. Um, it's a film that basically I'll just I'll just say the plot. Basically, a guy comes home from war and he has a vivid nightmare. And the thing is, he doesn't. You you're not aware of your dreams when you wake up. 
but we yeah. are because we see the nightmare we see inside his nightmare and the nightmare indicates that he and his fellow comrades have been brainwashed um it's as clear as day to us what's happening because the night the dream explains exactly how he's brainwashed except we don't have the context to put together so him the character played by frank sinatra again and us Wait, are don't completely spoil it because this sounds like i want to see it okay no, they the are point. on a long they he doesn't realize anything's that amiss until he meets someone who has the same exact not nightmare and it takes him and us all the way until the very end of the movie to figure out exactly what to piece together this really clever puzzle and figure out and I won't tell you the whole movie, but a presidential assassination and a plot and a plot to overthrow the U.S. is a, is a play. So the stakes are very high. Um, this movie is the inspiration for the TV show Homeland, which was a hit. Uh, it was also remade in 2004 by Jonathan Demme with uh, Denzel, Denzel Washington and Meryl Streep and uh, Lee Schreiber. Um, it's also referenced in politics a lot. A lot of people talk about the idea of the Manchurian candidate is the foreign power that would take over the u.s that 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 might implant or brainwash a politician so it made the news a little bit with trump and i think it i also yeah. remember making the news like 15 years ago when arnold schwarzenegger was popular enough to run for president and mm -hmm. pundits were saying well the, what about the manchurian candidate he's not an american citizen this is why we can't have american we can't have foreign nationals running for president um mm -hmm. so it's a very it was also so uh, incendiary and dangerous that was actually pulled out of circulation for 25 years after well, the assassination. That was because of the assassination of President Kennedy. Uh, the Frank Sinatra, who was a friend of President Kennedy, was so guilty uh, after the after President Kennedy was assassinated. So he just pulled it out of circulation because he felt guilty over his death. He, th he thought he might have caused it by making the film. And he wow. an inspiring oswald or whoever did it to do it or something. yeah mm -hmm. wow yeah it's it was a very it's a very powerful it's very thrilling it's it's uh and again it's it has some really it's it's really quite one of the best mysteries i've ever seen but it's also a thriller and it also has a very politically kind of scary message inside of it i really want to watch this i'm definitely watching this next sleep over with my friends when they're looking for a movie this sounds really good well, again, there's always the problem of whether For which people version would you watch, like, though? Sorry? Would you watch the original or the remake? This is the original 19th Yeah, but like, Sivan, which one would she watch? Ooh, that's a good question. I feel like I would face off who the cast is in each one. Well, the remake is not... The remake doesn't uh, have that element of mystery so much. It tips its hand a little too early, and it's not about the same things. This is like... I mean, I think the point of what, what me and Javier are trying to do is trying to say, watch a classic movie. You might really like it. I don't know if you and your friends would say, well, let's watch a, black, a film in black and white. That turns off a lot of modern okay. viewers, but hopefully you would watch it, Sivan. If you like acting and studying acting, you should learn from the grades too. And you've probably seen Meryl Streep, but you might not have seen Frank Sinatra or uh, Lawrence Harvey act, and they're both actually really good actors. So Yeah. But uh, um, sorry, Javier, what's your pick? What's your uh, for the between the Manchurian candidate, the old version or the new version? You mean? No, I mean you have a you have a movie that you want to talk about. Oh, I love is don't want to talk splendor. about. Love is a many splendor thing. It's a uh, it's a war related movie too, like from here to eternity, but set out against the Korean War, and a love story between uh, a Eurasian doctor in Hong Kong and a an American reporter. It's a, it's like a, a, a like an interracial love story, which was innovative for the fifties to be shown on film. And it's about how how the communist revolution in China brings a lot of, like is a backdrop against the decisions she has to make with, with and also people that she's a doctor. She's treating people that are refugees from Mao's China coming to Hong Kong in nineteen forty nine, right after the communist takeover of China. So it's like a, a global perspective and a love story at the same time. And it's a beautiful love story. It was made by Henry King, who was one of the big auteurs at 20th Century Fox, who's not well known, but a very good director, directed good dramas and musicals. He was a very multi-talented in many different genres of film, that kind of thing. So, mm -hmm. 
It says here that the film was released in Sweden in 1955. No, no, it was uh, no, not in Sweden. Released in 1955. Uh, it it was, had its it, debut in Sweden, according to IMDb. Oh, I, I didn't know that. I thought it would have premiered in New York, as uh, usual for American films. I, I'm surprised about the Sweden reference. Yeah. <laughs> uh, usually, they would have uh, premiered in New York at the Radio City Music Hall, from what I've always read about old films back then. Uh, it was with Jennifer Jones. And William Holden, if you you probably know William Holden more than Jennifer Jones, she sort of uh, is not well known as much, but William Holden is still well known, and uh, it's uh, he plays her a lover. She was he was married and she was divorced from someone, and it's sort of an illicit affair. But it was a very real love story, and uh, it won a couple of Oscars. It won uh, Alfred Newman won for best score of 1955, and uh, They've been nominated for Best Picture of 1955 and uh, along with uh, To Catch a Thief and all these, and Marty and all these good films from back then. And uh, it's a, people people remember the song, Love is a Many Splendor Thing. That's the most iconic love songs of the 50s. That's what the movie is remembered for. And so it's called Love is a Many Splendor Thing. So that's the, that's the legacy of that movie is the song, really. That movie, that song has been played in Valentine's Days for many years, <laughs> that kind of thing. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I think the whole point of this uh, YouTube video was to make you sing, Javier. So I succeeded on that front. Uh, yeah, I didn't know I was going to be singing. <laughs> I don't know if you should. I, I'm not sure if you should sell a video, uh, sell a movie simply because it has a song, because people can just download the I mean, song. I know, but people sometimes they're very people want to something like a gimmick and that song was sort of like a gimmick into that movie even back then so that yeah that made the movie popular with audience because the song was very beautifully composed and uh put in the movie okay let's start with shmuel what are you thinking about these two films um first of all i'm thinking maybe i could do a movie voice preview for them so, oh okay. if you yeah. want to Sure. You send me the pitch. I could be like, this in a summer, world. In a new world, you won't believe your eyes. Oh, uh, okay. In terms of these two movies, which one would I pick? Uh, they both sound good, but mm -hmm. I think The Mancurian Candidate is a movie I've heard referenced. So I feel like it is... Maybe a more important movie I should watch, just so I understand the references. But they both sound good, and I definitely am intrigued by the musical element of, uh, was it Love is a Many Splendored Thing? Yes, yes, uh-huh. Yes, yes. So I'm going with a Mancurian candidate. That's All right, Sivan, what do you think? Hands down, the first movie. I am definitely going to watch the first movie. I also would like to say that in the beginning when you did that voice, I literally thought that, Oren, that you were like playing an audio to make that voice. That is very impressive. Do that again. I want to learn how to do that because you literally sound like a narrator in a film. It's you really mean when impressive. Shmuel just did a, a narration? I think that yeah, do that again. It's so can you do a, Shmuel, can you do a voiceover narration for the oh. Manchurian candidates so it's relevant to the video? Sure. Give me a... Uh... A man me wakes on. up with the same dream. He wakes up with a nightmare. Then he discovers that one of his... wakes up with the same dream. Is it a nightmare? And then, the, then the, the dream indicates that he's been brainwashed and that he... Um, brainwashed. And that he has the same dream as his colleague, the same exact dream. So he, he realizes that he's been brainwashed. He realizes, perhaps too late, this summer, starring... Frank Sinatra. Frank Sinatra, Lawrence Harvey, and Boris Harvey. Lawrence no, no, Harvey, Lawrence, and uh, Angela Lansbury. Angela Lansbury. The... Yeah, yeah, you're gonna have to feed me the scripts beforehand. Right, 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 right. right. Mm -hmm. All right, and Asher, what are you thinking about these films? Well, I've actually heard of both of these films, but chose not to watch either one. Oh, okay. damn! Really? Why not? I hate just I had so many other things I wanted to watch more and they didn't even make my list. Oh, okay, okay. Fair uh -huh. enough. Fair but enough. I guess I, I would have to go with Javier's. Oh. The Manchurian oh. candidate 
Uh, didn't seem like a good film for you. Love is a many splendor thing. Yeah. Love is a many splendor thing. It doesn't it sound like the same plot as Sayonara? It's similar. Well, Sayonara came after. Sayonara oh. came after that one. That's why the movie be the movie was so popular that people started copying Love in a Many Splendor thing because of like Sayonara is a copy of. Love, uh, love in a way it's a copy of and for those of you who don't know sayonara is about uh an airman who falls in love with the japanese uh woman in the war and he's not supposed to do that and then i think marlon brando is the main character and i think he gets inspired to do the same thing i can't remember yeah he falls in love with a japanese woman too or something like that yeah yeah all right well thank you so much everyone for playing um i will keep this book around javier uh the, of ava gardner i never wanted to see 500 pages about her life it was just a free book i, I do i love ava i love ava i would i would love so her. i'll keep it and then the next time if you beat me squarely you can win the book okay sure sure that's fine that's fine. all right thank you so much for playing and have a great night everyone this was fun uh, thank you bye so much. thank you so much Yvonne. bye bye yeah.